Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I have a really cool sheet to show you today. And this one is for a Condor Amalgam, which is a very large chopping knife, obviously by Condor. And uh, a lot of their designs are either versions of, or at least inspired by, some of the native South American and Central American um, sort of jungle style chopping knives and machetes and things like that. Um, obviously down there they've had to come up with a ton of different options for effective chopping tools to get through that really thick uh, tropical like Amazonian overgrowth in the uh, in the rainforest and stuff so um, they are experts on these sorts of blades so Condor is very involved with that process down there and uh, uses a lot of that influence to bring us some really cool chopping tools up here uh, so anyway, the amalgam is, as you can see, much thicker near, or much wider, I should say, near the tip than it is near the handle. The reason for that in a blade geometry explanation is because it puts a lot of the weight down here so that when you swing it, that momentum is, uh, is really far forward and gives you a better chance of chopping deep into something when you actually strike it. So it's a very thought out, or uh, well thought out design. Um, or concept I should say but when it comes to making a kydex sheath for it this can actually become a huge problem uh, so you see a lot of guys that do sheaths for knives in this general uh, profile being thinner near the handle and wider near the uh, tip they'll do something that patterns after a lot of these leather factory sheaths and the whole idea is that the spine is open so all you have to do, if you can maneuver these snaps out of the way, I hate these things. Um, all you have to do is pretty much just get the tip of the knife seated and then slide it on in and then retain it with these snaps. So with Kydex, occasionally you also have it where the Kydex comes up onto the handle and if there's you know sufficient contour, you'd be able to click into, the, into that. So normally with, with that style Kydex sheath, you seat your whole handle first, or your, your whole tip, and then you kind of do a chopping motion down into the uh, retention around the handle. So I haven't actually gone Googling and looking up uh, Kydex for this guy yet, but I would assume that you'll find almost exclusively this concept of an open spine. My objection to it is that it creates an extremely flimsy sheath. It's a cool looking sheath, I have nothing bad to say about it aesthetically. I think they're really cool looking. Um, but it leaves a lot of flexibility in the kydex here. It's just a weak point because you have maybe, maybe you've got rivets or maybe a fold down on this side. But there's absolutely nothing to structurally reinforce the whole length of your sheath around the blade. And part of the appeal of kydex is that you have a tough and really rugged material that protects, uh, protects your blade against impact and things like that so um, for me it has to be a taco design um, I will do pancake designs per request but for my own personal taste a taco taco sheaths are just better because they are stronger uh, I won't make a case for them being lower profile because that all depends on how you do your edges and you know I obviously my tendency is to do a sort of a, a flared out shape with a wider tip on my uh, on my knives anyway so um, that won't be my argument, but as far as strength, you know, having a fold on one side and rivets on the other is empirically the strongest way to make a sheath. Um, so anyway, I won't prattle along with that anymore, but if you're going to do a taco for something like this, you absolutely have to come up with a way of making your, making your knife look more like a block here. It has to be kind of uh, parallel to the spine. The edge has to be parallel to the spine when you when you initially wrap hot kydex around it and put it into a press. The reason is because your kydex, if you don't do that, your kydex is going to come together and either get stuck together down here or at least touches down here. And then it becomes almost impossible to pull the blade out or even if it is possible, it's going to be scratching against this whole section as you pull it through because it thinks, this section thinks that it's meant to fit only this like inch and a quarter section of blade when really it needs to get this three and a quarter inch section of blade through uh, through that passage. Don't quote me on the measurements there, I'm literally just eyeballing. 
Um, it's probably totally off, but anyway, um, you get my, my point there. So you have to find some way of doing a build out, we call it building or blocking. Um, so what I did was I created a bunch of tape that actually even filled specifically the grind area so that the whole thing would be, uh, you know, the shape of the tip was intact, but then once you get to here, it's just a rectangle all the way down and it had it more or less a flat, a completely flat surface. Um, you can see just a tiny bit, I'll show you the back of the sheath, you can see just a little bit that shape of the blade there, uh, but this was created in a single press. I didn't have to go back in and, you know, reheat and push anything out, so I was really happy with that. Gives it a really crisp, clean looking finish. And uh, let's check out the fit. So the knife just goes all the way in, no problem whatsoever. That's totally smooth. There's no, there's no hang up. All right. So I'm really happy with how that came out. Um, all right. So this one is going to Henry out in Encinitas, California. Henry asked me to build him a baldric sheath, meaning. It carries on a sling. This particular sling is a two-point rifle sling, and it is designed by Eagle Rock Gear, who I've come to really like. I think their slings are great. And uh, this thing comes with, uh, I'm not actually sure, it's got to be at least 100 feet of paracord on it. And Henry asked if I could wrap some extra cord around it that he could pull off without affecting the, the factory sling. So I put some OD green over this Coyote Brown. I think it looks really nice. Um, and as far as the sling itself goes, it's just got a couple HK clips at the end of it and these quick adjust, this quick adjust loop so you can change length very rapidly and easily. And at the same time, it, it doesn't just come loose on its own. It's pretty incredible. Just that little change of angle when you, uh, when you pull on that loop and you've got a really quick adjust. Um, so to me, this is a necessity. I think that's a great feature that... Uh, not very many slings offer, as far as I know. So I'm really happy to give these guys my business and stock these these particular slings. They also come in like four or five different colors, which is nice. So anyway, go check out Eagle Rock Gear. I really like their stuff. Um, he asked me to attach, he sent me his amalgam, obviously. He sent me a Gerber strong arm. And then uh, a week or so after I had received those, he'd asked me if I would also be able to attach a Baco Laplander just so happens I own one so this is my saw it's a uh, it's a really good folding saw he's got one as well so I gotta take this off the sheath before I send it to him um, let's start with the Laplander and check out what the sheath looks like and uh, how you use it and all that good stuff I mean how you use it obviously this is all pretty self-explanatory but I like to give you guys a breakdown and a little bit of explanation behind it so why is there elastic cord on this the reason is because the shape of this particular saw is such that the end of it is widest. So usually you have some kind of contour where it's thinner here, then a bulge, then thinner here, and you got enough length beyond that bulge uh, to stabilize the, the item. You know, usually it would be a knife. So let's look at it like it's a knife. If it were like this, I think it would be no problem because you have enough material here or enough uh, enough of the blade here to come in contact somewhere with probably the spine of the sheath and stabilize it but when it's folded like so there's nothing beyond it so your thickest point here can be retained in a traditional sense with that click retention um, but then you're not going to have a lot of stability so it's going to it's going to have some play in it no matter what you do um, if you make it tight enough down on this side near the opening of the sheath to prevent any kind of rattle then the sheath becomes too tight because this section is thinner than the end of it so you see the dilemma here it's kind of uh, darn if you do darn if you don't but what I did with it was I created a sheath where you could smoothly um, draw and resheath your saw it is tight enough to retain it on its own you can you can shake the daylights out of this and it's not really going to move around on you much. The only thing is you do have this kind of up and down play, the stability like I said. So the very tip of it is retained really well, uh, but at the same time when you break it free and draw it, it's a pretty smooth and easy draw. 
so how you prevent it from rattling is stabilizing it with a little bit of shock cord. What I've done here on mine is just kind of done a maypole design and twisted them up and then I've tied like a double knot up here for a thumb push. Um, all you have to do is kind of wrap it around the toe. Apparently I didn't tie it very well. Um, you just wrap it around the top here. There's a Chicago screw here that it'll uh, catch on and prevent it from going all the way around the sheath. And the contour is such that it's not going to just ride up over the tip and come loose on its own. So that's how it stays retained. It uh, Obviously if you push it, it'll still move, but on its own, that sucker doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't do this. So you have a nice stable platform there. And Henry, what I did for you is uh, I just put it in a Ziploc bag. I got about four feet of Coyote and four feet of OD Green. Uh, so you can either choose between them or you can use them together. But here's what I would do. I've got a couple end pieces that I cut off. Um, let me look for... Okay. We're going to enter the land of make-believe for a second and pretend that this is the lanyard hole on your Baco Laplander. So I think, much to my personal opinion, what you should do is just leave them straight, put them together, and run both pieces through that lanyard hole. And then at a length that's appropriate, I would say, you know, in a relaxed position, bring them up about three quarters of the, the way up the handle and tie your first knot there. That way you'll have some stretch and some tension on it. Uh, and then, so we're gonna tie that first knot. I just do a little figure eight loop with two layers, something like this. I might be totally uh, mixing up my my knot names here. I don't know if this is technically a figure eight or if it's a just an overhand knot. Somebody out there that's savvy with that, comment down below and correct me if I'm wrong. So anyway, so you just do a little simple, I think that's an overhand knot actually. All right, so you do something like that and then you do another one up here. Obviously this being really short, it's not gonna work out, but I sent you more than enough cord to be able to do that and probably still have some extra for whatever other thing you wanna do. So anyway, having those two layers or four strands um, coming off of it makes it an extremely uh, stiff pull, which I think is really a smart idea when it comes to this. You can get away with just one, one cord, but two will really make it super secure. So I would encourage you to do it that way uh, or whatever else you want to do with it. So that's the Laplander there. Uh, obviously the shape of it, pretty simple sheath. I just took... <sighs> Dang it. I thought I was going to make you guys. I failed. Uh, Alright, so anyway, I just took a, a rectangular piece and uh, wrapped it around and yeah, the rest is kind of very obvious. Uh, as for the strong arm, what I did was I created this, it's a little bit wider than usual, but that's just to allow you to have a good amount of handle to grab up here while also still connecting to the rivet section on the edge of this amalgam sheath. And uh, as far as the rivet pattern that I chose, you know, this was just to maintain the shape and these are actually to keep the blade nice and tight and stabilized inside the sheath here. So. That pretty much explains the shape of this, but I think it, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, we had decided, a lot of you guys know that on a piggyback sheath, typically you see the knives are canted, you know, almost 90 degrees down this way, and the handles are coming off near the blade of the biggest, the biggest knife, uh, rather than the spine. And the reason is because normally, uh, more commonly I should say, you have it set up, configured as a cross draw on a belt clip. So this would be a more natural angle to pull off the smaller knife. Or you have it configured as a dangler on your dominant side, where again, it's more comfortable to pull it off this way than to try to, you know, go out the top. Um, but in a Baldrick's, in a Baldrick carry, at least in my opinion, it makes a lot more sense to have it set up this way because as you're, as you're standing here, you know, this is a comfortable draw, this is a comfortable draw, that's a comfortable draw. That feels a little less natural. You kind of got to reach around it a little bit more. Um, this just works for me better. So I'd suggested this. 
Henry said, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go with it. And so here we are. <clears throat> and as far as the amalgam is concerned, you guys have already seen the clearance for the blade itself. But if you look at the handle, there's almost no contour to grip onto. Um, so as you put this in here, when you get to the actual mouth of the sheath where the handle makes contact, you can feel it sort of pinch as you go in. What I've done is I've tapered the opening inward. As you get closer to the opening, it's actually a smaller, um, a smaller channel. So as you push this knife in, it becomes tighter and tighter and it just grips. It's just a friction hold. It's gripping this. Friction hold is not as strong as a traditional click retention, you know, where you actually mold out around some kind of contour on the knife. Like you can see this, this knife has a hand guard with plenty of contour on it and right here see if I can get the light to play just right. Yeah, right here you can see that divot where I'm tapping, uh, where it goes around the handguard, tucks in, and then bulges back out to create clearance. And so that little, that little divot is actually what creates the retention on the knife. That's what holds it in place. Uh, with this, you just don't have anything similar to do that to because it's a consistent width on the handle rather than having some kind of bulge near the blade, the Ricasso. Um, so, in any event, that's all I could do uh, for retention on this. But, that said, check this out. <clears throat> this can work really well. Sucker's not going anywhere. Sorry for all the rattling there. Probably could have retained that with my hand. So, it's not just going to fall out on its own. And just to make a point that I'm not doing anything to pinch it, um, once you break it free, it just slides right out of there. So it really is just this little section of Kydex that successfully pinches the handle and prevents it from moving around, gives it decent retention. Um, so barring, you know, a huge fall, uh, something like that, or, um, you know, whatever, maybe a giant impact on you, this thing will stay put right where it's at. So for all normal use. I don't see any issue with this whatsoever. Uh, and if you are super concerned about it, then, you know, maybe do, do the shock cord trick with the lanyard hole here and just find something to sort of loop around and retain on your primary sheath. But, uh, I don't think it'll be necessary. <sighs> Man. Three times. It's a bad omen guys. Bad juju. Um, all right. So anyway, that's that seen the three items, the three primary items. Let's take a look real quick at the carry system before I end the video. Um, so we have, for attach points on the Baldrick, I just use these one and, one and a half inch D-rings and I make a pretty simple holder for them. You can see um, this one was a little bit challenging because having, uh, having to be up high, you gotta do one of two things. You either have to, on the back of the sheath, you have to mold some kind of outcrop, um, or you have to do what I've done here and create a plate that kind of stands off and provides you with an area to mount your, uh, to mount this to, so, or whatever attachment you're putting on. So in this case, um, you can see I've just created a plate. This is actually two layers of Kydex. It's a layer of uh, eighth inch thick Kydex with so 0.125 inch along with a layer of 0.093. So this is very stiff, very rigid, uh, very rugged. And then at the top here where the actual sling is attached, uh, I won't give away my secrets, but I do have the hardware totally embedded inside the Kydex uh, so that when, so it's, it's pretty much up against, it's, it's really hard to show without some good lighting. Maybe I can get a flashlight in there for you. Of course, my flashlight isn't working. Brilliant. There we go. So you can see it's it's really low profile and you don't see the screws sticking out. The screws should be pushing directly against this layer of Highlander that you see back here, this reinforcement plate, but it's not. And, uh, and the reason that I design it the way I do is because if the screws are pushing in against it, then that can sometimes cause just a, a just a minute flexing, like an inward caving in of the sheath, 
and then you've got a hot spot where your blade gets scratched as you draw it out. So this is that's a bad scenario. So I just designed things the way I do to prevent extra pressure from being put on the uh, the actual um, sheath that it's directly in contact with. Um, and then we've got these reinforcement plates on the back side. I did them in Highlander, the accent color. And on the front side, I did them in black um, so that you'd still have reinforcement on both sides of your sheath, which makes the overall design really rugged, but then you get the, the color uh, match really nice between um, the black and the Cryptek Highlander. So you get that on both sides, but I think this came out looking really sharp. Um, the sling is Coyote, and we've got OD green paracord over it, I think I'd already said that. And uh, last thing to show you is just this little guy right here. You probably know what this is by now. You've seen a few videos where I've done it. This is, I'm just going to call it a belt anchor. And all it really does is provides, you wear this on your belt. And when you need to, you clip the HK clip onto this D-ring. Um, what it does is it provides a point where the sheath has a tendency to stay right where it is on your on your waist so whether that's your back or your side or wherever you can kind of clip it in and create an anchor point to prevent this from swinging around on you um, it's not a real complicated thing and it doesn't it's not super fancy but it does serve just a really simple function and the scenarios in which i would say uh, you'd probably want to consider it is if you get a lot of camp tasks or something uh, where you're going to be bending over and picking stuff up Sometimes a baldric sling is annoying because um, as you go to bend over, let me show you real quick. It's just gravity. You have your, sometimes it'll kind of fall out in front of you and then you constantly have to sweep it back and get it out of the way again. But with this, you know, I could put this on somewhere back here and have that stay right where it's at. Uh, so no matter which angle I'm at, you're always going to have or it, it's always going to stay stay put i think i beat a dead horse on that one guys <laughs> i'm gonna let that point go but you get you get the gist of it this is just a practical simple solution to uh the issue of you know potentially having your sheath flopping around where you don't want it so uh all right guys that is what i got for you i'm gonna put this on the sheath because the last one i did i forgot to mail it out so i gotta send it again that was the el chete i just posted for jacob uh so jacob <laughs> Your, your belt anchor is on its way, brother. I'm so sorry I forgot that. Um, all right, guys. If you like this sheath, if you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. I'd love to know your thoughts on these particular knives, this saw. Uh, this saw is kind of one of the forerunners. A lot of people talk about this versus uh, some of the silky saws, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But let me know your thoughts on that for those of you who've used it. Um, and I would love to know your opinions also on having an open spine sheath versus a taco design. This is obviously a stronger design, but that doesn't mean it's better. This is just my taste, my opinion, and uh, I would love you guys to weigh in on that with yours. Um, also, I'm going to shamelessly plug my uh, t-shirt campaign one more time here. So go check it out. It's on Bonfire right now. I'll put a link in the description box below, and uh, you can go pick up your t-shirt. We've got men's, women's, kids, hoodies, pullovers, uh, tank tops, long sleeve, short sleeve, etc. So go check them out. A lot of different color options and hopefully you'll find something in there you like and you can uh, patronize my, not patronize, <laughs> you can give me your patronage. Mm, I know what you guys are thinking. Um, and uh, rock some BBCK swag. So, all right guys, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate you sticking around for a long 24 plus minute video and I hope you tune in for the next one. God bless.